guys, it's Melanie. Welcome to my channel. Today I have a massive bookish unboxing for you, so stay tuned. So as you saw from both the thumbnail and the little opener, I have a lot of bookish boxes to unbox for you today. So I have four different Once Upon a Book Club boxes. I have, uh, let's see, three of those are adult. One of them is YA and I have two adult unplugged book boxes, two YA unplugged book boxes, and that's everything. So let's just jump right into this. We will start with this one. I do not know what order any of these come in. So if you don't know, uh, the way the Once Upon a Book Club boxes go is you get a book with like four or five different gifts uh, to go along with the book. And as you're reading it, you get to a certain page that has a post-it note on it that says, open your gift for page whatever. And you go in your box and you find the gift for that page. And it's something that's kind of corresponds with uh, what's going on in the story at that point. This is such an incredibly fun box and the gifts throughout the story just make it so interactive and I absolutely love it. So this is one of the adult boxes. So opening it up and it looks like so. We have a little a bookmark here that says, to fully experience this box, remember to only open your gifts once you reach the given page. Don't worry, we'll remind you. And then we have a signed book plate for by the author, a print from the story, which I will show shortly because I don't want to show that before the book. Okay, oh, here is the book. We have Yellow Wife by Sadika Johnson. And, ooh, there's what the end pages look like. This says, Born on a plantation in Charles City, Virginia, Phoebe Dolores Brown has lived a sheltered life. Shielded by her mother's position as the estate's medicine woman and cherished by the master's sister, she is set apart from the others on the plantation, belonging to neither world. She'd been promised freedom on her 18th birthday, but instead of the idyllic life she imagined with her true love, Essex Henry, Phoebe is forced to leave the only home she has ever known. She unexpectedly finds herself thrust into the bowels of slavery at the infamous Devil's Half Acre, a jail in Richmond, Virginia, where the enslaved are broken, tortured, and sold every day. There, Phoebe is exposed not just to her jailer's cruelty, but also to his contradictions. To survive, Phoebe will have to outwit him, even if it means making the ultimate sacrifice. Oh my goodness. This sounds like it's going to be intense. Wow, okay. So, as I said, we have a signed book plate. The print says, as long as there was breath, there was hope. Then we have like a little pamphlet here. Inside is a conversation with the author and some discussion questions for the book. And they've started including like an extra little thing. This time is Elsie's Mutton Stew. Yum. Cool. And then we have the gift. So this is the gift for page 93. We have this one for 259. This one for page 125. It almost feels like a book, maybe a journal or something like that. And then there's also one for page 19. Oh, the theme for this was from the pages of history. Also, if you don't know already, anytime I read one of these Once Upon a Book Club boxes, I do it in a vlog and I show all of the gifts as I get to them and tell you like what some, whatever the line is in the story. So I share it with you guys. I do have a playlist of all of the Once Upon a Book Club videos that I have done. I'll link that up above. Now on to the next box. Let's do the YA one. So the theme for this one was butter, sugar, and love stories. And then let me get to the book. So we have Happily Ever Afters by Elsie Bryant. 
And I did actually get this uh, book in, I think one of my unplugged boxes. And so I'll be getting rid of that one because it's not signed or anything. And this one did come with a signed book plate, uh, but I did keep the letter from the author from that one. So that's cool. And then let's see, we got the bookmark again. Just looks like this, kind of color coordinates. We have the little flyer here, and on the back it is brown butter raspberry muffins. Yum. Then we have a gift for page 346. We have the signed book plate. We have a print. Oh, this one has a letter from the author too. Um, so the print says, maybe there isn't anything wrong with a happily ever after. And on the back it says, Dear Reader, Happily Ever Afters is a love letter. To my teenage self, feverishly writing love stories but keeping them secret because I was worried they weren't important enough. To black girls, a searching for themselves in books across all genres, longing to be the one at the center, the star. To everyone learning to take up space and love what they love unapologetically. I hope it makes you swoon, makes you laugh, and fills you with joy. I hope so too. Okay, so we have this gift for page 287 and a gift for page 46. There are only two gifts in here, but these are big gifts. Oh, I, no, I'm wrong. There were three gifts because I forgot about this little one here. Okay, so these other two here are adult ones, but I think one of them is like a special edition box. I'm not entirely sure. They actually both arrived today, like right before I started filming. So I was like, perfect. Okay, opening this one up. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Looks like so. And the book we have in here is The X Talk by Rachel Lynn Solomon. And let's see, this says, Public radio co-hosts navigate mixed signals in the sparkling romantic comedy debut. Shay Goldstein has been a producer at her Seattle public radio station for nearly a decade, and she can't imagine working anywhere else. But lately, it's been a constant clash between her and her newest colleague, Dominic Yun, who's fresh off a journalism master's program and convinced he knows everything about public radio. When the struggling station needs a new concept, Shay proposes a show that her boss greenlights with excitement. On the X Talk, two exes will deliver relationship advice live on air. Their boss decides Shay and Dominic are the perfect co-hosts given how much they already despise each other. Neither loves the idea of lying to listeners, but it's this or unemployment. Their audience gets invested fast, and it's not long before the X Talk becomes a must listen in Seattle and climbs podcast charts. As the show gets bigger, so does their deception, especially when Shay and Dominic start to fall for each other. In an industry that values truth, getting caught can mean the end of more than just their careers. This sounds like it's going to be super cute and I'm really looking forward to it. Then we have a signed book plate and a print. It says, but maybe that's what we all are. Halfway broken people searching for things that will smooth our jagged edges. And there's a note from the author on the back here too. It says, Dear Reader, I'm so thrilled that the X Talk is part of Once Upon a Book Club's steamy romance box. And so this is the special edition one. This book has been waiting patiently in my brain for the past 10 years, but it wasn't until a few years ago that I started putting words on the page. Public radio was my first career and I fell for everything about it. The innovative storytelling, the velvet voiced host, the adrenaline rush of a live show, in college, I interned on a show not unlike the one Shay works on at the beginning of the book. And in my early 20s, I produced a weekly show that aired on one of Seattle's public radio stations. While I no longer work in the field, I still feel a spark of excitement when one of my favorite podcasts drops a new episode. And my heart remains drawn to storytelling. Only these days, I use a different medium. In the X Talk, Shay and Dominic's romance is a mashup of fake dating and enemies to lovers. They're fake exes, a scheme they're roped into as a last ditch effort to save their station. Soon they're co-hosting a popular show about dating and relationships while fighting increasingly real feelings for each other off the air. Also featuring a devious rescue dog, millennial angst, and there's only one bed. 
happy reading, and I hope you enjoy this peek behind the radio curtain. Okay, so our gifts are for page 306. Here's one for page 327. One for page 141, and this is a really cute box. And one for page 84. Now on to this one. Uh, the book for this one is Shiver by Allie Reynolds. And I've got a little bit in there. It says it started as a reunion, it ended with a murder. Ooh. This says, a reunion weekend in the French Alps turns deadly as five friends discover that someone has stranded them at the remote mountain resort during a snowstorm. This gives me, and then there were none, by Agatha Christie vibes right off the bat. Actually, I haven't read that, but I've read a retelling of that, like a modern one, and it was like a 10 by Gretchen McNeil, but this made me think of that. Anyway, when Mila accepts an off-season invitation to Le Rocher, one of France's most exclusive ski resorts, she's expecting an intimate weekend of catching up with four old friends. It might have been a decade since she saw them last, but she's never forgotten the bond they forged on this very mountain during winter spent fiercely training for an elite sn snowboarding competition. Yet the moment Mila and the others arrive for the reunion, they can tell something is wrong. The resort is deserted. The cable cars that delivered them to the mountaintop have stopped working. Their cell phone's missing, and, the, and inside their ski lodge, an icebreaker game awaits. Designed to draw out their secrets, a game meant to remind them of Saskia, the enigmatic sixth member of their group who vanished the morning of the competition years before and has long been presumed dead. Stranded in the lodge, with a looming snowstorm making escape even more impossible, Mila realizes there's no one on the mountain she can trust, because someone will stop at nothing to find out the truth about Saskia, and if Mila is not careful, she could be the next to disappear. Oh yeah, this is definitely uh, an in there, and then there were none, like, reimagining. So we have our little pamphlet here with the question with question blah, blah, conversation with the author and like discussion questions and stuff and on the back oh it's play the shiver game hmm it says directions write a secret something about yourself that no one none of the others in your group will know post it in a box draw the envelopes out one by one and guess who wrote what hmm interesting okay so we have another bookmark Signed book plate. The print says, do your best, that's all you can do. And then we have page 318 gift. The gift for page 313. One for page 152. And this one for page 198. Okay, so we have reached the halfway point We've gotten through all four of the Once Upon a Book Club boxes. Now we just have the four remaining unplugged book boxes. And I'm not sure which um, one is the adult and which one is a YA, but they have like specific colors, I think. So let's just start with this one right here. Okay, opening this up looks like so. This is the adult fiction dreams february 2020 box so we have a little uh mirror here on the back it says you're my mirror you said so yourself by sarah j moss yeah it's just a mirror but it looks like this and then we have a pin here it, let me take it out of the plastic this is the unplugged book box exclusive enamel pin in collaboration with mckenzie carton or catron and it is uh, from the starless sea oh we have a big thing here it's a petrichor ink chassis sea salt big dreams and friendship it's a luxury shower and bath gel infused with botanicals hmm interesting well it's got a little seal on it but smells good cool holy cow this is a thick book whatever that is 
I'm gonna continue with the other stuff in the box first, but wow. Then we have a candle by Natural Pure Honest. This is Flickum Biscus Oat Moss Magic and Fire, and it's a six ounce soy candle. It's a very soft scent, almost soapy. Yeah, and it's really pretty. It's got like some stones in here, and yeah, it's just really cute. We have something in plastic. Okay, so this is actually a really nice thick tote, and it says, love is the one thing that transcends time and space, and it's got like constellations on it and stuff. Really good thick handles, and it's lined, and it also zips closed, and there is a little zipper pocket on the inside. This is awesome. I actually really like this tote. A lot of the totes I don't end up using because I, I get so many totes, but I really like this. I think I will actually use it. Okay, then there are pieces of something that I think must have come apart. Let me see if I can figure out how to put it together. Okay, uh, well, it's a keychain for one. It, the little ring and the plastic part and the this uh, were all separate. But I put them together and it's actually one of those things for you to like open doors and like press buttons and stuff so that you don't have to touch them. And it has books all on it, which is really super cute. Let's see what else we got. We have journal prompts on dreams and the photo challenge. Did that say it was the February 2020 box? I meant the February 2021 box. <laughs> okay, there's a card for the uh, people that made the, the shower gel. This is bringing your favorite rainy day reads, music, and TV to life in lush sensory products. And you can use code UNPLUG to save 15% on all your orders at patricorink.com here I'll put it up here for if you're interested you can like pause and take down that information there you go then we have a signed book plate and a letter from the author as well as self-discovery journal prompts and things about the uh, uh, March box so the theme for March for adults is discovery and for young adults is identity and some sneak peeks for the March fandoms. Uh, the March YA box will contain an item inspired by the cruel prince and the adult fiction box will contain an item inspired by the invisible life of Addie LaRue. Let's check out the book. If I remember correctly, the adult boxes come with paperbacks and the YA boxes come with hardcovers. And this is a thick paper bag. Ooh, but it's pretty. The Mask of Mirrors by M.A. Carrick. Hmm. Okay, let's see how many pages this is because I'm dying to know. 655 pages. And then there's like a chapter sampler of another book, I guess. Oh, it looks like this story actually ends on page 629, and then there's like some extra things. And a glossary. Oh, it's a big glossary. Oh, there's like a little sneak peek of the beginning, I guess, of the next book. This is a series. All right, let's see what the letter says. Okay, this says, Dear Reader, we have a secret to admit. M.A. Carrick, the author of the Mask of Mirrors is a new mask over an old friendship between Marley Brennan and Alec Helms. We met over, our two, over two decades ago as, an anthro as anthropology students interested in learning about other cultures and folklorists interested in the stories they told. Over the years, our interest grew like a filigree mask, intersecting and diverging to make a complex and beautiful whole. When we decided to write a book together, we didn't know what story we wanted to tell, but we looked for the seed in our friendship. We made a list of all the things we love in stories, complicated and competent heroes, found families, and strong sibling relationships, and beautiful clothes that serve as more than just decoration, flirty banner with a side of dueling and dancing, 
secrets and lies and powerful truths they often conceal. The Mask of Mirrors has everything on that list and then some. A ma it's a mask pulled over our friendship and a reflection of it. And these old friends would like to invite you to pour a cup of decadent spiced chocolate, cozy up with your favorite soft and fuzzy thing, and join us in the city of Nazira, where even the world is at its darkest, friendship will be the light that guides us safely home. Okay, cool. The back here says, fortune favors the bold, magic favors the liars. Ren is a con artist who has come to the sparkling city of Nadzira with one goal, to trick her way into a noble house, securing her fortune and her sister's future. But her masquerade is just one of many, and as corrupt nightmare magic begins to weave its way through the city of dreams, the poisonous feuds of its nobility and the shadowy dangers of its impoverished underbelly, underbelly become tangled with Ren at their heart. Okay, and that is everything that is in this box. Okay, let's do one of the YA ones next. Opening this one up, and this says it's the Young Adult Nightmares. So it wasn't me that messed up. They actually messed up on their cards. Look, it says February 2020 on here. And it says February 2020 on here. But I know these are February 2021 boxes. That's funny. Okay. So the theme for this was nightmares. Okay. Moving up those worms. It looks like this. So let's see what's in this plastic. Oh, I love when they include useful items. And this is... They gave us an oven mitt and a pot holder. Cool. Okay, let's see what they're inspired by. Because I'm not entirely sure. Okay, this is from Blood and Ash Oven Mitt and Pot Holder Set. It says, in Jennifer L. Armentrout's from Blood and Ash, the main character Poppy has the weight of the kingdom on her shoulders. It's a situation that becomes a nightmare for her, and she's afraid she isn't equipped to handle everything. But the reader gets to watch her face her fears. This set has symbols from the book, including Poppy's dagger, a red pearl, the red pearl brothel, two rings, white lace for the maiden, reed lace, a black midnight rose, and the leaves and arrow inspired by the cover artwork. It was designed exclusively by Alyssa's World, um, and it's at A-L-Y-E-S-A-S -S World on Instagram for Unplugged. Alyssa's World shop sells gorgeous enamel pins and bookish art prints, and she has an Etsy shop. It's Alyssa World. Okay, cool. I actually am really excited to read those books. I ordered a special box that has like the full set and I'm really excited for it. Ooh, next up we have a sleep mask and it's one of those gel ones. I totally could have used this baby the other day. So you freeze this and you can just slide it into here. Uh, but this says, I'm always surprised to discover that when the world seems darkest, there exists the greatest opportunity for light. Bridget Kimmerer. This is from A Curse So Dark and Lonely. Yay. And this is nice and thick. We have a bookmark, which I've actually gotten one that has this on it before. Um, but the, I think the back side is different. So this one has Alice in Wonderland on one side. It says, We're, we are all mad here. And on the back it says, A Tale as Old as Time, and it's from Beauty and the Beast. It looks like so. It's very pretty. Then we have a candle. This is Chocolate Caramel Fudge, The Whisper, um, and it's from Until the Very End Co. Ooh, and that smells really good. And it's like purple and white. I love candles that smell all desserty. Like, that's my favorite. And then we have Not Everyone Circles the Same Sun, Monday and Claudia, Anxiety Calming Essential Oil Roller. Okay, cool. Looks like this. Not sure what this is inspired from. Oh, from Monday's Not Coming. Okay. Let's see how it smells. Hmm, very herby. <laughs> That's all I can really say. It smells like herbs. But it's nice. You can see rubbing that like somewhere, like maybe right here, and having your eye mask on and just um <laughs> 
Next we have Bree Matthews whipped soap sugar scrub, jasmine and smoked leather. And it's in this brown jar. Oh, it's purple. I'm not sure if I can smell the jasmine or not, but I definitely smell like that smoked leather smell. But it looks like this. Neat. Oh, we have a signed book plate, but I'm not going to show you because it says what book it is. Uh, then we have the photo challenge. And see on here, it does say February 2021. Uh, and then there's the journaling prompts for overcoming challenging times. And a little print that looks like this. And on the back has a letter from the author, which I will read shortly. And then we have our book. I have seen this book all over Twitter. And that is What Big Teeth by Rose Sabo. And I think this looks so cool. Blue on the inside. And I mean, obviously this gives me like Red Riding Hood feels, vibes, whatever. Which I, if it is, I'm like super excited because I love retellings. This is what the note says. Dear reader, I'm fascinated by the stories that families tell themselves. The best ones, of course, get repeated over and over again until the truth of them is threadbare. In my family, one of the funniest stories we tell over and over at Christmas and on road trips is about the time my great aunt killed her husband. Others feature albino ants who pan for gold in California, con artist cousins who disappeared somewhere in Florida in the 1980s, and great-grandparents killed by moving vans and radioactive paint. Now that I'm older, I can see that all of these stories were shot through with threads of mental illness, trauma, and the experience of being Eastern European immigrants trying to fit into the American narrative. They are... I have come to believe a way to make horror and tragedy into dark comedy. The ones at least that we have, fi have figured out how to tell. What Big Teeth is a book about what it's like to come from a family with a dark past. It's about realizing that whatever you might have in common with them, you are a different kind of monster. It's about trying to make sense of the people who made you and using what sense you can make to decide what kind of person you're going to become. This is a book I would have wanted when I was 17. I would have felt frightened reading it, holding some pages halfway shut in case I needed to close them quickly, but I also would have felt understood. I hope that whoever you are, wherever you are, you feel it too. Huh, and it says down at the bottom, somewhere in the night forest, the boy is running. Okay, what is this book about? Cause I'm like really intrigued. It says, what you see isn't always what you get. Eleanor Zarin has been estranged from her wild, bloodthirsty family for years. When she flees boarding school after a horrifying incident, she goes to the only place she thinks she is safe, the home she left behind. But when she gets there, she struggles to fit in with her monstrous relatives who prowl the woods around the family estate and read fortunes in the guts of birds. Eleanor finds herself desperately trying to hold the family together, all the while trying to make sense of a re-emerging power that seems increasingly linked to the reason she was sent away in the first place. In order to save them all, Eleanor must learn to embrace her family of monsters and tame the darkness inside her. Exquisitely terrifying, beautiful, and fierce, this genre-bending fantasy debut will sink its teeth into you and never let go. I'm excited. I think this is a like, Little Red Riding Hood retelling, except she's the wolf. Yeah. And then the only other thing in there is the, uh, the thing about the themes for March. Okay, let's do another adult one. Opening this one up. And this is the March 2021 box. And as I said before, the theme is discovery. Okay, this one ooh, looks like so. Okay, the first thing I see is this gold lame bag. It's a drawstring bag. What is inside? 2020 Visionaries Darrow Hand Sanitizer Spray with Pure Essential Oils. I'm not sure what this is inspired by. Oh, Red Rising. Okay, cool. 
Let's see how it is. It almost has like a mint and cinnamon kind of smell to it. Not bad. We could always use more hand sanitizer, that's for certain. All right, next up is a big bag of something by Sudsy Duck Soapery. This is Wren Bath Fizzies. Poppies, grapefruit, shamic powers. So they're bath salts. Big bag of bath salts. Oh, and <laughs> the safety seal didn't really stay sealed. <laughs> But yeah, it's a big bag. And oh, this is inspired by the Poppy War. Then we have a journal here. It says blink and the years fall away like leaves, V.E. Schwab. And this is made by Petrichor Inc. This is down here. And this is just like a lined journal. There's a place up here for you to like mark what kind of the weather is, what day of the week it is. A little memo number and a date and that's all it is throughout neat I like it uh, we have a bookmark it says am I hallucinating break bills university I think it says if you were how would asking me help I have no idea what this is about looks like this let's see on the back it says the moment I discovered magic was real was the moment I discovered myself. Oh, it's uh, inspired by the Magicians TV show based on the novel by Lev Grossman. Okay. Then there's a photo challenge, journal prompts on discovery. There's the letter from the author, which I'm not going to show right now. A signed book plate. We have a candle from Scented Stories Co. Castrema. It smells like smoky vanilla, amber, and surviving the worst. I smell the smoky vanilla. And there's like a fruity smell in here too. I can't quite pinpoint it, but it's a white candle. It smells really nice. It's a very light scent. Oh, then we have a pin. I actually have one of these. It looks like a key. But it's actually a really nice pen. I've gotten one of these before. I like it. I think they're cute. Uh, there's a card here for the 42020 Visionaries, um, which they did the hand sanitizer. And it says on here you can use code UNPLUG to save on orders at 42020visionaries.com. And we have our book, and then also the themes for April 2021. Uh, for the adult fiction, the theme is Venom, and for the young adult, it is Power. Okay, let's open up this book. Okay, this is The Conductors by Nicole Glover. It looks kind of like another historical fiction. Let's see. Here is our signed book plate. And then the letter from the author says, Dear Unplugged Reader, In Your Hands is a tale of alternate history where magic, mystery, and murder take center stage. Inside, you'll find a magic system based on the constellations, a few astrology jokes, a variety of friendships with all their roses and thorns, a blending of history and fantasy, and the best mystery-solving duo around. The Conductors is very special to me. This book is about me embracing all that interests me and showing that history and the people who live through some interesting times can be viewed under a different light. I hope you enjoy this book as much as I enjoyed writing it. Interesting. Okay. Okay, now for the last box. Oh dear, my battery is flashing. Hold on. Okay, sorry if there was an angle change. Now on to the last box. Oh, this one is taped still. I thought I'd gotten all of them. Okay. Here's this one. This is the March 2021 box. The theme is identity. All right, let me move some of these worms out of the way. Okay, this one looks like so. First thing I see here is a candle and it's uh, an unplugged exclusive. It's Kel. 
Amber, Mystery, and Absinthe. And this is a darker shade of magic inspired. It's white and red with like some gold glitter. Ooh, it smells nice. Like it smells like guy. I like it. It smells like men's cologne or something. Then we have, I don't even know. It says books and tea. It's like a straw on one end, but like a tea strainer slash spoon on the other end. I don't even know. Okay, <laughs> this says bookish straw tea strainer. This exclusive tea strainer assures loose leaf tea remains in the cup and not in your mouth. Steep your loose leaf tea in hot water and use this straw to sip your yummy brew. Maybe you're supposed to drink your tea and this keeps the tea from going through the holes into your straw. I don't know. I'm not sure if I'm a fan of this. This is weird. Okay, and then we have like a like a jewelry tray or a drop all, you know, place to put your keys or whatever. And it's metal and it says, I declare after all, there is no enjoyment like reading. I really like that. Is this inspired by anything? Oh, uh, it's a Pride and Prejudice snack slash trinket tray. Okay, cute. We have a bookmark. It says, if I can't find a good enough story, I make one. And on the back it says, you've only seen the least of what I can do. And then we have the photo challenge. And on the back are some spring self-care ideas. Like uh, spring cleaning, read upon waking, decorate with flowers, stick to a routine, get your vitamin D, get crafty, focus on growth, eat healthy, and treat yourself, meditate. We have a letter from the author. Oh, okay. So I remember they, they sent an email about this product. So apparently the formula that they made, like it fills up the cup, but then as it sits for a while, it like compacted. So it looks like you only get like half a jar. And so they're making a new formula and sending it out with the next box uh, but this is by natural pure honest it is dimple shaw warm evenings cherry blossoms and love whipped soap so it looks like this and you can see here it looks like it's half a jar it just smells like soap to me oh then we have some tea. This is Call Me Sweetie, Yadril's Dark Ritual, black tea with cloves and florals. So it's just a tiny little thing of tea. And it says you use one teaspoon per eight ounces of water. So I'm guessing you can put this just loose in the water if you're drinking from this straw and it won't go through. Who knows? We have something in a box here. Oh, it's a mug. This is a Dread Nation inspired mug. And it says, rise up. Okay, then we have our book. <laughs> it's funny. I actually um, read this book last month as an audiobook it was uh it came up in my wheel as a uh, script today's pick and it's what i read for that and that's if i tell you the truth by jasmine carr and i actually really like this let's see what the letter from the author says dear reader i'm so grateful that if i tell you the truth this found its way to you this novel is one of my dearest pieces of writing and will always remain close to my heart it is an allegation of so many moments of injustice towards women of color that propelled me towards activism as a young adult. When you meet my characters, Kieran and Sahara, I hope you find solace in their poetry, bravery, and in their warm embrace and joy in the knowledge that you can shake up the world just like them. And uh, let me just read you the synopsis here. 
And if you want to know more of my thoughts on this, you can go back and watch either my blog, like my reading blog that I did the week of this, or um, I think it was the first week in February that I read this, or you can go and watch my uh, February wrap up blog. Anyway, this says, if I tell you the truth that I've dug from the hardened depths of this shrapnel filled dirt with these aching bloody hands, would you believe me? Would you still love me? In a world that intentionally silences the voices of its most marginalized communities, what does it take to be heard? Kieran leaves her home in Punjab for a new start in Canada after a sexual assault leaves her pregnant. But overstaying her visa and living undocumented brings its own perils for both her and her daughter, Sahara. Sahara would do anything to protect her mother. When she learns the truth about Kieran's past, she feels compelled to, speak, to seek justice, even if it means challenging a powerful and dangerous man. In this stunning sophomore novel, acclaimed writer Jasmine Carr uses prose, poetry, and illustration to explore trauma, fear, courage, community, and the healing power of love in its many forms. I'm excited to have a copy of this. It's very cool. And see, I actually, you know, I, I listened to the audiobook, so I didn't see the poetry. I didn't see uh, illustrations or any of that. There's like illustrations around the poems there. And this is a really good book. So I'm glad I had a copy. Okay, so that is everything in all eight of these bookish boxes. What was your favorite item? Comment down below and let me know. I think my favorite item, non-bookish item, has got to be this uh, Blood and Ash uh, oven mitt and pot holder. I absolutely love when they give really useful items like this, so that's the one I'm most excited for. As far as the books go, I think out of all of the books, I'm most excited for What Big Teeth. I really, I love a retelling and I'm really excited to see how they do this one. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, give me a big thumbs up. If you'd like to see more videos like this, click that subscribe button down below. And until next time, remember to always be completely you.